the co-founder and former CEO of Panera, says he knows what doesn't motivate workers. In a recent interview with business insider Ron Shake, Panera Bread's founder and former longtime CEO, said this about workers, quote, no employee ever wakes up and says, I'm so excited, I made another penny a share today for Panera's shareholders. Nobody cares. To that I say, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. No worker in America is like, oh my God, I can't believe I got up and I made extra money for the shareholders. I am so excited. Great. He also said, you don't care whether your CEO comes or goes. Again, nailed it. Yes, of course. So that's what he gets right in this interview. The rest of it, not so much. So let's get into it. So, look, he stressed in the interview how important it is for management and members of the C-suite to empathize with their employees and to better understand what can get their buy-in to the company's mission. Okay, I have an, an idea. How about you pay people more? How about you have better working conditions for your employees? Perhaps even offer them affordable health care plans? Ooh, oh. Now, currently, I know he's not CEO anymore, uh, but currently, Panera, not really offering competitive salaries to their cashiers, <laughs> okay? Uh, making up, what, 18000 a year? Hmm, not very much. So, now, look, what is he saying? He's saying, mm, no, what we're going to prioritize is therapy. Wait, what? He said that he believed a key part of good management is connecting with and understanding their uh, employees and says he's a big proponent of therapy. I always say that therapists belong in the C-suite. Oh, oh, okay. Now, he continues by saying, so much of what running a business is about is figuring out how do I connect with people? What motivates them? And how do I help them decide to affiliate with what the mission of the enterprise is? Okay, uh, first off, let me say, therapy is good. I like, I'm, I'm a fan of therapy. I, hey, I got no problems with it. It can be a very helpful and valuable tool for people's mental health. I'm, I'm pro-therapy here, okay? Uh, but let me tell you, it, it's not really that difficult to understand what motivates your employees. And that's money. <laughs> Look, okay, so let me share with you what mo motivated me to work, okay? Being a fan of not starving. Yeah, that's, that's my motivation. Having enough to cover the basics, having enough to, you know, pay the bills, to actually have a roof over my head. Yes, and then maybe a little bit extra so I can have some fun every once in a while. You know, after I've done paying my bills, that's motivation right there, okay? I could care less about the mission of the company. I've, you got bills to pay. Why do you care about the what the CEO does and what the mission of the company? Oh, I'm here to strive to make uh, the best bread for people. No, it's, you do, you go in, you do your job, you get your paycheck, go home. That's it. The ultimate lesson here that CEOs need to take from workers is that we're working because we have to. It, we got to put foot on the table. That's it. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people who love what they do. Of course, I see them all the time. And that's wonderful, right? And, and you get into a job and yes, of course, it's a means to an end, but also you got some pride in what you do. You enjoy what you do. You enjoy the working with the people. Sometimes you enjoy working with the customers. And that's great. And that's wonderful, and I'm not discounting any of that, okay? And these statements, maybe they're going to resonate with this, with, with those types of people. But I think a lot of us, most of us, we're working to live, not living to work, okay? So, let's, again, that's just my perspective. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just my perspective, okay? And, and I can't speak for all workers out there, obviously. And I also think it's fine to say that we do need more empathy in the workplace for management. Great. Yes, more understanding. More understanding, that's wonderful. I think a lot of issues would be solved though if management, if CEOs, shareholders actually made sure to make workers economically whole. That's really it. That, that's, that's the magic, right? The magic bullet, right? You want, you want good workers? You want workers that are you know loyal to the company's success? Take care of them financially. I mean, Another thing is, hey, if you want workers to care about the shareholders, then you could make workers the shareholders. That's another idea as well. Worker co-op. That's how that works. 
<laughs> so, yeah, again, aside from that, you take care of workers financially. You, you get them good health care plans, child care, things like that. So if they need it. And yes, also, part of that health care plan would actually involve being able to afford therapy. If you need it. it. Look, it's a misnomer, okay, that money does not create happiness. The money itself, by itself, sure, doesn't. But guess what? It allows you to get things that, that can make you happy. Um, and, and I don't mean like, oh, Bugattis, Maseratis, whatever, right? No, happiness is being able to take care of yourself, take care of your basic needs, uh, to afford food, to afford, uh, you know, a decent place to live, to afford having some fun money once in a while. That's your basic needs. What money does is it can bring you peace of mind with the things that it can do, okay? Now that said, the more money you have, the more diminishing returns you have. So look, you, you know, again, it, it can bring you happiness, it can bring you peace of mind up to a certain point, right? And then you're all set. Then you have all the money that you need to take care of those basic things and to have fun money and all that stuff. And so at a certain point, it gets actually detrimental when you have too much money. I know, right? And look, it starts to work against you mentally. And you start getting into this and, and see, we see this a lot with like super wealthy people that have always got to one up each other, that it becomes like, oh, how much do I own? How much do I, can I crush my workers? You know, it, you get greedy, you get disconnected. You might start to think that you are amazing and awesome and wonderful because you got all the money and only your brand of, you know, uh, special, whatever you bring to the table means that you deserved the money and that everyone else who doesn't have money is lazy and doesn't deserve it. Because, you know, if they were as special as you were, well, then obviously they would have money and I wouldn't. You see that mindset among very, very rich people. I, I'm not saying this guy is that way, but he certainly is missing something. He is, he is disconnected in this way because it doesn't seem to see, at least from this interview, that he understands the motivations of workers, of average working people, okay? Look, missing that core component is something that a, a lot of higher-ups unfortunately miss. And that's you got you, you got to make sure your employees can afford to live. That's it. And on that front, like a lot of corporations, Panera is failing. And I know he's not CEO anymore of Panera, but still not addressing monetary concerns, not addressing the idea that there are so many companies out there who don't pay their workers enough, even in these times, and that you have workers that are not interested, that are disconnected, that are, you know, again, not wanting to give all of themselves to a company that gives so little in return, this is why. And they don't see it. And they don't see it. And so I'm hoping that our continued labor resurgence, more unions, labor unions pushing back and forming uh, and, and, and you know giving a voice to these workers will finally be the thing that makes them understand.